Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Drums and Drams. My name is Cameron and tonight I wanted to do a quick comparison of two different bottlings of Bell Mead Cask Reserve. Now, as many of you know, Bell Mead recently changed the proof of their cask reserve, moving it down from a cask strength product now to being a consistent 108.3 proof release. As you can see here on this older bottling, they used to write all of the details of the particular bottle on the front label, handwritten. So on this one, we have 113.6 proof. Uh, batch was you know, number 19-38, and it was bottle number 423 from that batch. Because they have moved the proof down to a steady 108.3, these new bottlings basically just say 108.3 proof on the front, and you know you don't really get any of the other goodies. Uh, you know, the reason that they did this, the reason that they talked about on their website and everything like that was essentially just to create a more consistent product. And, you know, I totally respect that. I respect the idea behind that. Some people are a little bit disappointed that it's no longer, you know, officially cask strength. There's no longer going to be as much batch variance between the bottlings. But I was curious to find out how these things compared this older bottling for me is something that I have really, really loved, um, especially as it's opened up. It's only getting better and better. Really that beautiful high rye MGP flavor in there. And so I recently picked up this um, newer bottling here at the lower proof when I was out in Indiana bourbon hunting a few weeks ago. And I just cracked it open. You can see it is only past the neck here, but I wanted to compare this to my older bottling that I really enjoy to see, you know, how things have changed, whether for the better, for the worse, all of those good things. So just really quickly, um, Bell Mead Cask Reserve is uh, produced by Nelson's Greenbrier Distillery based out of Nashville. They're essentially buying up barrels from MGP and blending seven to 11 year old barrels to create uh, this bourbon that you see here. And obviously, like I mentioned in former times, uh, they would bottle that at cask strength and they would batch it and give it batch numbers and all that kind of good stuff. I believe the makeup is still the same, you know, that seven to 11 year old blend. I've read different places about the mash bill. What I believe uh, the mash bill is, is a blend of that 36% rye and that 21% rye from MGP. So you can't really pinpoint the mash bill if they're using uh, different blends for these bottlings. But once that switched over to um, the new proof, I'm not entirely sure if that's a consistent blend or not. So I'm just letting you know, Whatever that mash bill blend is, it is a high rye MGP mash bill with a decent bit of age on it. So let's go ahead and get into it now. The first thing that I'm going to do is taste the bottle that I'm familiar with, the 113.6 proof version. And then we're gonna move down, you know, just about two and a half percent ABV to this other bottling, the newer bottling and see how it compares. So let's go ahead and check out now on the nose, this older cask strength edition of Bell Mead Reserve. Yeah, so clearly an MGP product, right? You can really smell the rye influence here. There's a decent bit of ethanol on the nose, even though this bottle has been open for six, seven, eight months, maybe. Um, the ethanol is still there, still present. It's not even above 60% ABV, hardly above 55, and you get that much ethanol. So it's good and bad, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, it's an intense bourbon on the nose. Yeah, so I mentioned rye forward. You get a ton of cinnamon on here. You get a lot of those green herbaceous rye spice components. And definitely a nice crisp green apple, like that sour green apple note on here. Everything is bright. It's, it's herbal and fruit forward, light fruit forward. Imagine walking through a, a pine forest. You know, you get some of those piney notes. Um, chewing spearmint bubble gum and eating a green apple. Like that's kind of what the nose is here. Yeah, and of, of course you're gonna get your your vanilla in here. You're gonna get some, some caramels, all that kind of good stuff. There is a slight cherry note as well, but it's not really dark. It's not like that Luxardo cherry. It's, um, it, it's more like the cheap Walmart cherries, if I'm being honest with you. It's not bad, it's not a bad nose. I really enjoy it. It's somewhere between a rye whiskey you know, and um, somewhere between a rye whiskey and a high rye bourbon for me. Like it's a, it's sort of a strange nose. I don't have anything else quite like it. Even my other MGP sourced products aren't 
necessarily like this. So it could be that this particular batch of Bell Mead is different. We will obviously compare it to the uh, new consistent batch and see what we get. But let's check this out on the palate. Cheers. Oh, that is intense. Really, really wonderful. Like extremely spicy on the palate. So much rye spice, pepper, cinnamon, herbal notes. Really great oak presence on the palate as well. Great caramel presence, oak presence, all of that kind of stuff. I wasn't getting that so much on the nose because it was so overwhelmed by the spicier, you know, rye forward characteristics. But on the palate, that is really mouth watering. Okay, let's start on the mouthfeel. The mouthfeel is like medium or maybe slightly heavier. It's not like really rich and viscous because the proof is only, you know, uh, what I say, 113.6. So it's not crazy high proof. Therefore, the mouthfeel is not insanely oily, but that's that's okay. When it transitions to the finish, it's a it's a medium long finish. It's not crazy long like an Elijah Craig barrel proof or anything like that. But for me, I like it because it's not as challenging of a sip as some other really intense barrel proof bourbons. And, and it makes it easier to kind of come back to um, more frequently. Let's have one last sip here of this older bottling of Bellmead Cask Reserve. Mm. Really fruity that time. Crisp green apple. Oh, really nice caramel, kind of a pear note. Cherry, it's, it's so fruity. Transitions so well to those richer caramels and those oak notes. It's great. It's a great sip. And I absolutely love this older bottling of Bellmead. I don't think I've quite missed anything here. So let's go ahead and move on now to the newer bottling, the 108.3 proof. I will say this bottle cost me upwards of 60 bucks, the older version. And in Indiana, I found this newer one for 50 off the shelf, which is a great deal because sometimes these are upcharged on secondary you know, sometimes they're just simply gouged in stores. They're kind of hard to find here in Ohio unless you really know where to look. We have a couple stores that regularly get the Bellmead Cask Reserve. So um, for what it's worth, in most parts of the country, they're pretty available. Kind of hard to find around me, but you should be paying around 50 to 60 bucks um, for this bourbon. So let's check out this newer version, 108.3 proof. <sighs> okay, so this is completely different. I mean, I, I, I'm, I can't even believe that this is the same product from the same company. Yeah, wow. So the newer version here has a, a deeper, darker characteristic all the way around on the nose. The oak and the caramels are actually like coming through. There, there's not as much of that herbaceous, you know, all those green notes in the older bottling. This one... Like I said, more caramel and oak, but it's it's just more fruity in terms of like summer fruits. I, I, th I think that's what I want to say. Yeah, tons of orange in here, candied orange. And I tend to get this on some of these MGP blends. Most notably would be Remus Repeal Reserve Batch 4 had a ton of candied, spiced candied orange on there. And, and I'm totally getting that from this Bell Mead. Yeah, there is probably some apricot in here as well. I'm trying to pinpoint the fruits like um, apricot, maybe a little bit of cherry as well um, with that orange. So it's it's not necessarily really bright sour fruits, but it's also it's also not like really rich cherry and plum or anything like that. Yeah, there might be a bit of raisin on this one. I can see that. But yeah, the caramels and oaks really come through here on the nose. Just so much better. All right, let's check it out on the palate. That is a great, that is a great bourbon. Wow. What's so, what's so jarring to me about this is that these are so different. I mean, it's, it's like, it's like I'm drinking a straight up rye whiskey on that first one. And now I'm drinking just, I don't know, maybe a more well-rounded bourbon or what I like about this second one is the fact that it is deeper and darker and richer, but it also feels more general. I don't know if that makes any sense. All of the flavors have been kind of taken care of and put in their place in the blend. And 
they are trying to hit sort of a middle ground. There's nothing too bright on there. There's an amazing mid range to the palette of, like I said, those those fruits that aren't so bright, they're not so dark. You know, you're not getting those deep, dark, rich plums and figs or anything. The oak is here, but it's not overwhelming. It's it's very middle of the road. It almost feels like a safe bourbon. That said, it's an incredible bourbon. It really tastes amazing. Whereas if you go to this older bottling, this thing basically picks one characteristic or one profile and maxes it out. And that profile here is that really herbaceous green type profile that it doesn't even seem like a 36% rye. It seems like a rye whiskey in most ways. Um, I don't know that there's a wrong answer here. Honestly, the new Bellmead Reserve at 108.3 really reminds me of that Remus Repeal Reserve. It's got a lot of those same characteristics. This other one, just so rye heavy. So let me collect my thoughts here, kind of figure out what I want to say. I think for me, I'm I'm a little bit torn. So on one hand, I love the fact that this cast strength edition here has such a character to it, such a, a strong profile. And I like the fact that it, it just really maxes itself out. And of course, like the higher proof is better. That's great. This other one, the fact that we now know what to expect from Bellmead Reserve, that's also really, really great. I, I saw a video one time with Ralphie, the really, you know, the big time Scotch reviewer here on YouTube, a video from Ralphie kind of talking about the trust that we as consumers put in distilleries, we put in master distillers and all that kind of stuff, or master blenders in this case. I'm okay with whatever that master blender comes up with if they've earned my trust. So for instance, if this Bellmead cask reserve, this older bottling, which was a particular batch with a particular set of flavor, you know, tasting notes, flavor profiles, if they produce this and then the next batch is not even near as rye heavy as this, if it's got different characteristics, but it is completely blended the right way, if it amplifies, those characteristics, the right amount, it's just maxing itself out. If it's doing that, I believe in it. Even if even if it's like I bought it thinking it was gonna be really green and, and rye heavy and herbaceous, and then I'm like, oh, this is a totally different thing. But whatever that totally different thing is, it's maxing out, I'm still sold on it because good bourbon is good bourbon, no matter what the flavor profile is. Now, if you don't like that flavor profile, okay, yeah, that sucks, I guess, in that case. But the trust that we put in these blenders is that if we do different batches, we are trusting that those different batches, while there may while there may be batch variants, will still be exceptional products. And I would rather have the highest end exceptional product with some variants than relegating a product to being more middle of the road and more consistent just for the sake of consistency and brand identity in terms of flavor profile. You you may not agree with that and, and that's okay. Like I know that if you go pick up a Knob Creek nine year small batch, you pretty much have an expectation of what that's gonna be because it's a small batch product. It's a standard, you know, staple on the shelf. But for me, it's like, I, I like the slight variance and I like maxing those flavor profiles out. That's not to say that I'm hating on this new bottling at 108.3 proof. In fact, I think this has done really, really well, especially for something that is, you know, even as Bell Mead says, just the more consistent product and that's what they were going for. I could go either way on this. I'm not actually that upset. When I first tasted this, which I've only done one other time before this video, I got so much candied and spiced orange that it was really off-putting for me from this, this newer bottling. But, but now in this video, as I'm recording this, I like it a lot more and I think it's a really, really great product and it it's going to appeal to more people than this batch, at least that I had and maybe some of the other batches because they're going to be more specific flavor profiles. So for what this rant is worth, I don't think any of these are the wrong answer. I think they're both exceptional products, whether it tastes like you're eating a green apple and chewing spearmint gum in a pine forest or if it just tastes like really amazingly blended MGP seven to 11 year old bourbon, it doesn't matter. So 
Um, I, I think I'm I think I'm done here. I love all the stuff that they do. Can't say enough good things about them. Thought I was gonna hate the new batch, honestly, and I don't hate it that much. I think it's pretty freaking good. I'd love to hear from all of you what you think about this. If you have an older cast strength edition, what that flavor profile is, especially if it differs from mine. I am probably gonna try to find a couple more of these before they're you know, harder to find on the secondary market and all that as we transition to this newer bottling. But again, let me know what you think. I would love to hear your comments. Go ahead and put those in the comment section below. Like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Drop me an email if you have anything you'd like me to review specifically. And uh, I think that's all I have. So thank you guys so much for checking this video out. I'm gonna go ahead and end with this new 108.3 proof Bell Mead Cask Reserve. So cheers to all of you from Drums and Drams.